What up, friends, and welcome to episode five. And so this is the quick intro for episode five titled, How to Make Friends. At least I think I'm going to make that a title. Sounds somewhat catchy. So how do you make friends? I hope that you'll find in this episode as I talk about what does it really mean to be a friend, at least from my perspective. Uh, I hope that you'll find that it's somewhat of a pretty simple pretty simple idea, just n- not all things that are simple are easy to execute on, right? But I'm excited about it. I think it'll be a good resource for you. And so I found a movie clip that, you know, I'm all about movie clips. I don't know if you, you've been able to tell by now. I'm all about movie clips. Found a pretty funny movie clip from Bridesmaids, which is a movie that uh, for the longest time I thought was geared toward girls. Actually, it probably is, and I'm just in denial, but it's, it's a pretty funny movie, I think. So this will probably appeal to um, a lot of the female audience, uh, but guys, tune in. I think it's pretty funny. So talking about friends, let's check out this clip. <laughs> um, hi, um, I'm Annie Walker. Yay, Annie! <laughs> uh, I'm not going to come with a big speech, so I'll just say this. Um, I'm so happy to be a part of this celebration, and you two deserve each other, as well as a lifetime of happiness. It's so beautiful. Love you guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. That was so sweet. Thank you. Lil, remember that trip we took to Miami with the boys? (laughs) And they were working the entire weekend, and we just sat and drank wine and ate peanut brittle, and I shared things with you that I've never shared with anyone. And you made me realize how I can trust people again. So let me just say, Lillian, you're my best friend. And I'm so proud of you. Oh, don't cry. Don't. And, um, Doug Lee, I'm sorry, inside joke. <laughs> uh, you better not keep my Lil on a leash because I still need my drunken Saturday nights at Rock and Sushi, okay? Everybody so basic. Raise your glasses to the couple of the decade, Doug and Lillian. Woo! Um, I just wanted to say really quick that you're so special to me because, well, one of the reasons is because I've known you my, my whole entire life, and you've really helped shape who I am. just want to thank you for carefully selecting me as your maid of honor. <laughs> I know you had uh, some other choices, but um, you're like my sister, and I love you. Well, that concludes the speeches for the night. Mm. Thank you. One last thing. Yeah. I, it's rare to meet someone as an adult who you really connect with, and that's you, Lil. I went to Thailand recently with my husband, Perry, and there's a beautiful saying that I learned there. Kun ben sung nong kong chan, sung chan ja kat madai, mai ben chen. It means you are a part of me, a part that I could never live without, and I hope and I pray that I never have to. Kap oh, kunka. Geez. Kap kunka. Oh my God, how does one top that? And that's it for tonight. Thank you for coming. Really quick. Thank you all for coming. I just wanted to say really Dessert quick. wine is out. <laughs> Consuelo, really quick. Speaking of geez. Consuelo, Lillian and I took Spanish together <laughs> in Uh-oh. school. Fighting back. And so I would just like to say to you and to everyone here, gracias <laughs> para vivar en la casa. And las escuelas, and el azul marcada. <laughs> Tienes con vivir en las fortuitas. <laughs> and gracias. <laughs> oh, thank you. I feel so close to you and can trust you. You're my angel and soulmate, and I feel I can communicate with you with simply a look. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yep, yep, I got it. Lillian. <laughs> Keep 
smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me, for sure. <laughs> That's what friends are for. In good times and bad times, I'll oh, be yeah. on your side forevermore. That's what friends are for. Man, I tell you what, being a best friend sounds tough. I'm glad I'm a guy. We don't do this kind of things or whatever. Actually, I, I'll probably girls in real life don't do that. Don't do that too. But so that's the intro, guys. We're gonna be talking about friendship. I'm excited. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing today? My name's Kyle, and this is Generation Giants Podcast, episode five. So last show I said we're almost halfway and halfway rounds up. Well, now we are halfway and halfway rounds up. So basically, we're at episode 10 already. How about that? Only we're halfway there, but rounding-wise, we're, we're pretty much there. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are officially online on most of the major social platforms. Which I'm excited about. So please find us. If you're new to the show, please find us on Facebook, Twitter, subscribe on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We've got a web page, and soon we'll be on some more platforms and we'll be creating some more resources for you, which I'm excited about. So please subscribe, rate, and share. And if you live in the Charleston area and you're a part of the student ministry, then please do all those things and come find me. And I should have some wristbands it's cool wristbands that are coming in soon which i would love to share with you guys for free so and if you're a parent um which of course this show parents and and even people in their 20s or whatever you're welcome to listen i want to encourage you guys to please share as well because i want this to be a resource not just for students but a tool for parents and would love for parents and students to talk about some of the things that i talk about on this show so that's kind of part of the bigger vision it's not meant to just be something for students to listen to in secret. In fact, that's probably not the best way to go about it, about that. But um, there's a lot that I could say on that point, but I want to encourage parents to, uh, if, if you find this show would be a good tool for your students, please please share and uh, support the show, whatever that looks like. Right now, I'm not really looking for donations. Certainly in time, I will need donations because I can't keep going into debt for this show. Not that I'm actually going into debt, you students try not to go into debt. I'm not actually going into debt, but my expenses are certainly somewhat high and my revenue is nil, right? So that's how it is whenever you start these kind of things. But I'm excited to do it and I'm happy to do it. So thank you guys for tuning in. Wherever you guys are, maybe you're scrolling the Facebook feed, doing the infinite feed like everybody does and thinking you're going to stumble upon something amazing. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe you stumbled upon this and this could be the amazing thing. So who knows? But thank you guys for tuning in. Maybe you're doing homework right now. If you're listening live, you're probably not because it's summertime. If you are doing homework right now and you're in summer school, then kudos to you for listening to this show. I tell you what, hopefully you find this show will be valuable to you. But hopefully that's not where you are and you're not doing summer school. Uh, actually, about that, I, I did summer classes all through college. Kind of got me ahead for the school year and allowed me to focus on other things and extracurriculars. So that's probably not the reason if you are in summer school in high school, that you are in summer school, but probably not by choice. But kudos to you, regardless, for listening to this point. Uh, or maybe you're playing video games, listening to this in the background, or riding in the car, maybe with yourself. Just with yourself. Is that even a, a term, riding, riding in a car with yourself, by yourself? Or maybe you're uh, with your folks, and, uh, or maybe your, your mom or your dad suggested to listen to this show, so, which is totally cool. So thank you guys. I'm excited. My week, actually right now I'm recording. It's actually not past 11 at night. So I get to finish this show pre-midnight, which is nice. I get to actually have dinner at somewhat of a normal time unless I go rambling for three hours, which will probably not be the case because I know ain't none of you going to listen to me for three hours. I'd be lucky if y'all listen to me for 30 minutes. But I hope that you do want to invest your time. I'm excited about 
about this show. So my week, it's been it's been good. This past weekend, I had had a pretty busy weekend. I wanted to highlight. I'll, I'll throw up some pictures. Uh, went to a youth triathlon in my community. So there were probably, you know, I, I don't know, maybe 100, 120 kids. Uh, I think the cutoff age was probably around 13. So it wasn't quite the age. It was definitely more on the kid side. Uh, I don't know at what age you would start doing normal distance triathlons. So the smallest triathlon, the shortest, is, is called a sprint. Triathlon 101, there's generally four levels, you know, four distances. Sprint's the lowest, followed by Olympic. So in the Olympics, there's a triathlon event. The uh, Olympic distance is what they do in the Olympics. Then you have half Ironman and Ironman. So sprint, sprint's, sprint's pretty quick. Some of you high schoolers, you could easily do a sprint. The, the trouble is you got to find a bicycle and, and maybe a wetsuit. But now for a sprint, you don't need a wetsuit. But uh, a, a sprint triathlon is generally about a 400, 500 meter swim, usually in the wa- open water, not in a pool, but maybe it's in a pool sometimes. I did one that was in a pool. Very quick swim. That one was 250 meters. Very quick. So, which suited me because I'm not a swimmer. And so about 500 meter swim, about somewhere around 14 mile bike, and then a 5K run, which is 3.1 miles, which if you do cross country, I mean, that's your, that's like all you do. That's your bread and butters. 3.1 miles, so pretty much anyone across country, you could easily easily do a sprint. So I don't know what, at probably at about high school age, you'd start doing that distance, but this was a kid triathlon, so it was shorter. <clears throat> I think they had really, really little kids, you know, little kids kind of probably around 7, 8 to 10 kind of age frame, and then probably something like 10 to 13 age, age frame, something like that. And so it was a little bit different, but it was cool. They they did more or less about a one mile run, about a probably a five mile bike, something like that, maybe, and maybe a maybe a two hundred meter swim or something. And it was cool. It was cool seeing all the parents. It's cool seeing the the kids. You know, it's it's neat that you can get involved in those kind of things that early. So you know, if if you're if you're in middle of high school and and uh, you have a younger sibling, you know, maybe consider telling them, uh, encouraging them if there's a youth triathlon in the community, then check it out. It's definitely a fulfilling experience and encourage all of you to even try out a triathlon at some point, perhaps. You know, it's funny, at some point everyone does triathlon and didn't do triathlon, right? As with any sport, at some point they didn't do it. It's, triathlon is, is a little bit different than other sports, I think. Most people, you know, play peewee baseball, football, or, or whatever, at least the guys and girls. You know, they have, they have their own things, softball or whatever, maybe gymnastics, which is really cool. I never got into gymnastics, but those guys are diesel, right? You've seen the Olympics? Those guys, I don't know how they do what they do. So I remember when I, brief story, when I got into CrossFit a little bit, some of you may not know what that is, but that's okay. I, I remember thinking pull-ups were like the toughest thing, and then I started doing CrossFit and kipping, which is cheating for some, some people call it cheating, but it's using your whole body to do a pull-up, and uh, pull-ups went way up. Got a lot better at it. But uh, triathlon is a sport that most people get into a little bit later in life. So it's cool if you can try it out early. And it's really rewarding. I tell you, it gets addicting too. I had some friends in in college that kind of did it with me a little bit for a little while. And they enjoyed it. And definitely it it grows you. You know what I mean? Gives you you kind of a confidence boost. And kind of opens the doors to what you can do. Because at some point you didn't think you could do it. And then you do it, right? That's with anything, any challenge. Right, you have to keep challenging yourself. So, so that was cool. I'll post some. If I'll probably, I probably already have shown some pictures, uh, assuming I got the pictures to work. But show them in the margin there. And so that was kind of a highlight that I did on Saturday, this past Saturday. And, and that was that was a big deal. And then hung out with some friends on Sunday. Had a great had a great Sunday. Did a little prayer walk. I'm not going to get into that, but did a little prayer walk with some friends and went to church and served and. Uh, had some leisure time, try to get ready for the week, and it was good. So hope all of you are enjoying your summer days if you're watching live. Make the most of it. Tell you what, how much time we got? It's uh, late, late June. So not to be the bear bad news, but it won't last forever. So enjoy it. Don't get too crazy. I remember uh, 4th of July is always, always a good time. That's coming up. I'm excited about that. I remember... 
sort of as a brief story, 4th of July, my buddy uh, Kenny was my, one of my best friends. Kenny, maybe a shout out. I doubt he'll ever hear this. But we we in a group, we went to a park and we would do Roman candle wars. <laughs> you know, I'm sure kids sometimes still do that. I'm pretty sure on the Roman candle, it says, don't shoot this at anybody. So, of course, you know, when you read that and you're a teenager, you think, oh, that we got to try this now, right? And it was, it was just funny. I know we did this at least one year, and I'm not recommending y'all do this, but I know y'all are students are going to do more or less what you want to do, but just know there's potential consequences. And I remember we, we were shooting them, and luckily none of us got shot and got hurt at least, but we, we shot a tree that had a bunch of moss. You know, the, the moss stuff, I, I don't know if all areas have moss that grow on trees or whatever, but down here in South Carolina, there's a lot of mossy trees. And uh, that moss is, catches on fire quick. And we, we started to get worried because the, the moss started burning up. But luckily, it, it burned out before the tree caught. So we, we started getting worried. It was probably about 20 or 30 seconds where we were not sure how this would end. So 4th of July. And then, and then it was good. Shot fireworks. Had plenty of years growing up where we uh, shot fireworks probably later than we should and were a bit noisier than you should. I mean, that's how fireworks are supposed to be, right? If they ever came out with a, a noiseless firework, that'd be the worst business idea ever, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right? Who's going who's gonna to buy a noiseless firework? It's like half the money you spend is for the noise that it makes. So it's, uh, it's a fun time. So I'm excited. Fourth of July coming up. I know you guys are. And hope, hope you guys have some good family plans. You know, be talking about it. And it, it's, a, it's a great holiday, you know. The Declaration of Independence, that's a big deal. I'll be talking about it more than likely in that show. And that's a big deal. Big deal for reasons that you may not necessarily even think of, you know. The uh, the risk. The huge risk, personally, for the, for those that signed it. It's, it's amazing. So I'm excited. Hope you guys are doing well. And so today's show. Today's show. Oh, what did I title it? Um, well, by now you know what the title is. So I didn't write the title down. Uh, I got to collect my thoughts on that. But I'll come up with a catchy title that you'll be sure to love. And so we're going to be talking about friends, friends and friendship. And I want to present it in a little bit different light because I know if you're in middle school, you may not think about what friends really mean. You know, surely you may think about what your friends mean to you, but what what does being a friend really mean? And and if you're in high school and college, you know, you've probably thought about it to some extent and you may even have better thoughts than I have. So these are going to be kind of my thoughts, but also loosely based on some Nicomachean ethics. Uh, Nicomachus was Aristotle's son. This is just a little bit of Greek philosophy history. And Aristotle wrote a book to his son called Nicomachean Ethics. And in that work, he talks about friendship a little bit. So this is loosely based on that a little bit. I actually didn't go back and, and reread anything from that work. I've simply... Uh, I have it on audiobook. I bought it on audiobook years ago, and I've listened to the audiobook several times. So it's sort of subconsciously uh, been added to my thoughts on friendship. So this was loosely based on that, but generally it's my thoughts. And some of you, you'll you'll agree. Some of you, you'll have to chew over some of the thoughts that I have. And some of these thoughts may even make you feel, dare I say, a little bit uncomfortable about where you are, which is which is okay, which is totally okay. At the the bottom line of, of everything that I say on these shows is it's okay. You know, it's okay to not feel okay all the time. I think that's where growing up we are I don't want to say misled, but we're not we're not affirmed enough that, that it's okay. You know, if you if you think you're alone at school, like you feel like you don't have any friends or any support, it's okay. And I'll get to why I I believe it's okay. You can all sort of find your own reasons why, but but the truth of the matter is it's okay. And you know, so so friends I think are just a funny thing growing up, right? You know, sometimes they can be the source of your greatest joy, your funnest times, your most favorite memories. Not to say always the best memories. Uh, You know, some memories could be. Uh, could come to mind for various reasons, whether they just added value to your life or they were just a funny thing. And you're like, ha, 
Can't believe we got out of that one scot-free, right? I'm going to take that one to the grave. Now, hopefully you don't have any kind of memories necessarily like that. And they're probably not as big as you may even think they are. But, you know, be, be thinking about that as I'm talking, about who your friends are and, and why they're your friends, how they came to be. You know, for me, I you know, maybe to highlight a, a few f- thoughts on friends and friends, for me, you know, so I'm 26. I have, well, currently, I, whatever it's worth, I don't have any friends from when I was five that I still talk to on a regular basis. Now, or even, so let's even fast forward middle school. Let me try to think, how many friends do I have that I still talk to from middle school? I think none. I think none. Not that that's a good or bad thing. It's just how it worked out. Now, high school, I've got one friend uh, named Gibson who I still talk to on a fairly regular basis. And there's probably three-ish that I might talk to on a yearly basis from high school. And I'm from the time I was 18, so that's eight years ago. So, and that's not going to be for everybody, right? But it's just how it is for me. And to co- going even back to college, so I went to a military college. A lot of the guys in college, college is a little di- different than high school. You know, some of you are in high school, you haven't experienced it yet. But, you know, people come from all different areas. And then after you graduate, usually they go back to those areas. So college friends can be tough to hold on to for years unless you're very intentional about it. Now, I'll get into social media a little bit. I don't have any social media. Even if I did, I don't think I'd keep up with those friends personally very much. Um, you know, but ah, whatever, you know. There's, there's a big difference between just knowing what your friends are doing by popping in on their profile and actually being their friend. You know, it's such a huge difference. So, I, from college, I've got one friend that I still talk to somewhat regularly uh, named Patrick. Great guy, good friend, and one guy, one guy named Chu. He's from Taiwan, and he moved back to Taiwan after college. And so I don't get to talk to him very much, unless it's trying to catch up on Skype. But they have like twelve hours difference, so I don't talk to him very much. So, so it it's interesting. Whatever it's worth, just to set some preface to what I want to talk about, it's interesting how later in life you don't keep up those friendships that at one point you might have thought were the most important thing in the world. Now, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer about it, you know. If if they're worth if your friendships are worth something to you and it's meant to be, you'll you'll maintain them to some degree. You know, just for me, I I I'm very much uh one who must be present, you know what I mean? Like I can't have personally friends that are online based. I just I just can't I don't want to, I can't, I just don't. It's just not my thing. If it's your thing, then that's okay. If it, if it brings you fulfillment and joy, you, you legitimately just love keeping up with people online and you think it adds nothing but value to your life, then do it. But it's not my thing. So so it's just interesting. You know, friends, you, you spend so much time with them. They're such a big part of your life growing up. I mean, I have, I have countless memories, obviously I'm not gonna get into, as if you cared about all my memories of my friends growing up. But, you know, water parks and playing Pokemon together as kids and television and the countless video games, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mario, all that fun stuff, right? All that, some stuff is probably still around. Now I know Xbox wasn't necessarily around when I was very young. I think Xbox, is Xbox the big leader in the video game world? Y'all gotta, y'all gotta keep me up on it. I know there's probably PS12 by now. I still remember the first PlayStation. Uh, Legend of Dragoon. Greatest game on the PlayStation forever. The Legend of Dragoon. It took like five discs to get through the game. Um, I don't know what video games are, are popular, but you know, however you however you make your memories with your friends, then then make them and cherish them. You know, you know, fr- friends are just such a big part of growing up. But I know that sometimes we get caught up in the numbers, right? We can get caught up in a lot of things that are outside of the context of what friendship really means. You know, you can get competitive about it. You you know, it's almost like you got to make your your click. I think click is probably still a word that's used to some degree. You know, in uh, in middle school, in eighth grade, we uh, 
we made a term. Well, we didn't make the term, but we used the term called uh, posse. We were, you know, we had a we had a little group, and we were like, "Yeah, this is our posse. You you, uh, you can't join. We're not accepting members or whatever." You know, we're kind of funny about it, and so a lot of times it, it gets turned into an exclusive club. You know what I mean? Or you just want to accept anybody and everybody, which which is good. But I want to talk about that. So let me let me kind of dig in a little bit. And I'm going to try to end the show a little bit earlier than the others, maybe 45 minutes. So we'll see how it goes. But So I want to talk about what is a friend first. What is a friend? So the way I look at it is a friend is someone that demonstrates love or good will toward you. Someone that demonstrates love or good will toward you. So that is a big concept. Now, I can't give a friendship 101 uh, in 45 to 60 minutes. I just can't. I can't do it. I'm not going <laughs> to. I can't. Maybe somebody else could. Maybe some of you guys could. You could give just a, oh, I know all there is to know about being friends, making friends. I have 200 billion friends on Facebook, which is, that's cool. That's cool. Or followers on Twitter or whatever. You know, that's that's cool if that's your deal. So, but in that in that definition, uh, demonstrates love or goodwill. Love Love is a big word. Love is a word that gets trashed in our culture. And I know it even gets taken as like a not masculine word. You know, if you're a guy listening, if, if you're a girl listening, you're probably, probably like, hey, man, talk about love more, which is, you know, which is good. Um, but lo- love is a huge concept. And I want to talk about that. You know, there's, there's many different types of love. Therefore, there's many different types of friends. You know, there, there's a different type of friend for every different type of love. That, that gets demonstrated, and, and there's a great book that I'm not going to get into, but at least to mention it, there's a book. Well, I don't. Maybe this isn't the exact title, but uh, five love languages. I think there's five, and it talks about different ways that people demonstrate love, and that's that's a good resource that a lot of adults use, especially in the church world, in the faith world, in the Christian world, talking about love languages, which which is really important. It's really important when you get married, as I understand. I'm not married. In time, but it's a, it's a good resource for one day. It's good to it's probably good to read the books before you need to have read the books too. So that goes for that book and other life books, you know. So so that's really what being a friend is. And so with with what I want to talk about, I want to try to answer the question: How do you make more friends? Because don't we all kind of want more friends? I mean, or is there a cutoff? Is there like, is there like a golden number of friends? Like, oh, this really is the cap. I can't accept any more. You gotta, you gotta apply. You gotta take a number. I, you, you gotta beat the person at the bottom who's currently at the bottom of my friend list. You gotta beat them in an arm wrestling match if you want to be my friend. You know, or you gotta have some kind of competition or Hunger Games. Have a Hunger Games. Whoever wins gets to be your friend. You know, probably not. None of that's probably reality. I think we all want to be liked and we want to be accepted. That's that's a part of, of life. Huge part of life. Huge part of life. Everyone wants acceptance. And that's where I think friends, this concept of friends, sort of fills that void, especially growing up. I mean, think about school. Isn't it, isn't it kind of funny? You know, at some point, schools were probably like 20 students, and that was the school. And then at some point, you know, we centralize schools. I'm not going to get into the whole history of education in America. That's a big topic. And what education is going to look like in the future, now that we're in an information renaissance, could look very different. But isn't it kind of funny that now we basically just create, in many, many, many cases, these large mega schools, maybe 3,000 students or, or whatever. And you basically, and of course, we have the classrooms, and that's where the important stuff is, but... Then you have all of the social learning, right? Like I think of the lunchroom. You, you're, you're all told, all right, you're all going to eat in an hour and you're all going to get food from this one place in this one big room and you're going to figure it out, make friends or sit alone or whatever. And I just think the whole, it's kind of funny, you know? You know, it's like unintended consequences because everybody has to eat, you know? You got to have lunch. But and at my high school, you were able to at lunch, you were able to move around. It was kind of cool, you know, and a lot of times I would just eat really quick, and then and then my buddy and I, we'd usually toss the football or something, you know. We were always trying to become football superstars that never quite became reality, which which is 
it's still good. Still good. We we enjoyed our time getting our butts whooped on Friday nights. I think we won. I think we won one game throughout my entire. We we were not good back in the day. Or actually, as, as we like to put it, the other teams were just really good. I mean, we were good. The other teams were just really good. But you know, the the lunch room, the setting, and, and everything else in school. It's just kind of just kind of interesting. It's almost like it's almost like a social experiment. <laughs> like, what's going to happen when you just mix? All these different kids, you know, and I don't mean it that in a demeaning way. If, you know, if you're 17 and 18, you're in school. That's just how it is. But I wouldn't call you a kid. But when we mix all these students with all these different backgrounds and different situations at home, which is incredibly important, you know, what will happen? And it just turns into a popularity contest a lot, right? Maybe not all the time. But I think we get caught up in, in aspects of making friends and finding acceptance that have nothing to do with the definition of friendship, which is someone that demonstrates love or goodwill toward you. So I want to talk about a few levels of friendship. These are just levels that I came up with, more or less, like I said, sort of based on references that have impacted me over time. And maybe you'll find that these are a good way to think about friendship and a good way to gauge what type of friends do you have right now? And do you, do you need do you need different types of friends and how do you get different types of friends, which is what I want to talk about toward the end. So just jump into it. The first first type, five types that I came up with, first type I would say are virtual friends, right? Virtual friends. Most people have them. Now I cut my social media, like my Facebook, a long time ago. Uh, well, three years ago. It's not that long ago, but about three years ago. And I remember I had over 500 friends, somewhere about, probably 600-ish when I cut it. Now, I have to ask myself, where are all those people now in my life? Or would they even be in my life if I still had Facebook? I'm pretty sure the answer is my life would not be any different. In fact, it'd probably be worse because I'd be checking my Facebook all the time and I feel bad about all these people who call themselves my friends and not reaching out to me and being friends to me. And so in some of you guys, your, your social media rock stars, and that, that's cool if that's you. Oh, my screen went off again. You know, social media has its place, but I'm going to talk about social media because I think that it, we turn to it to try to fill something. Whether it's acceptance, popularity, we want to be known. And there's probably better ways to fill that need than checking your social media all the time. You know, never before in human history in the, I don't, I don't know. Millions, I don't know. I don't know how many years human history is, but we'll just say millions, whatever. In all the years, we've never been able to connect so quickly with so many, and it's gone beyond the limit, the human limit of how many people we can actually truly have in our life. You can't truly have 600 friends. I mean, there's 86,400 seconds in a day. You're sleeping through eight hours of them. How are you supposed to keep up and truly know 600 friends, you know? I mean, the answer is you can't. To some degree, you can, but you truly, you can't. You can't reach the top level of friendship with every single one of them unless you unless they are your 600 friends for your entire life. You're not going to add any more, and you basically rotate them. You engineer a method of keeping up with all of them, and every everyone gets, uh, that'd be half a day, I guess, a year, more or less. Everyone gets half a day with you a year, and maybe after 80 years, you'd all be best friends by the end of it, but probably not. Uh, maybe someone will write a book if they ever haven't about something like that. So virtual friends, virtual friends. That's the first level of friendship. Usually it's online. Even if you know the person uh, in real life, y you, your friendship is based online and it's marked by a number, whether that's a number on your social media account or in your phone book. It's just, it's just a number. It's a name maybe, but it's a number and they really don't mean that much to you. And I'm not saying that's not okay. That's, very much normal in today's society. Everyone has virtual friends. That's that's just how it is. So that'd be the first level. Ideally, um, well, you can have as many virtual friends as you want, but ideally you need friends above that, <laughs> at least one. Uh, the second type I, I call are acquaintances, right? So we all, we all have a lot of acquaintances. I mean, as long as you leave your house <laughs> at some point uh, on a regular basis, and maybe you go somewhere consistent, on a regular basis, you have acquaintances. You know, it could even be the barista, you know, at the coffee shop or whatever. When I was in high school and I got carpooled 
uh, before I got my license, we'd meet at, at a coffee shop and usually it was the same person working there almost every morning. That'd be an acquaintance. Maybe we know each other's names. Maybe we know, maybe the barista knows where I go to school every day. Uh, acquaintances could be people at your school. You know, it's marked by only knowing names and basic information, you know, and it's, again, it's not a bad thing to have acquaintances. It's a very natural thing, but it's on the lower level of friendship. It's very, it's very surface level, right? This is probably nothing new for a lot of you. Then the next type I'd call are fun friends. Fun friends. Everyone wants fun friends. Fun friends are good. You probably have a lot of fun friends. If you do fun things, you probably have friends you do those fun things with. Maybe it's playing sports, uh, playing video games, going somewhere, going on school trips, and that's your people that you hang out with, maybe. <clears throat> it's marked by activities together that you both enjoy. So, fun friends. Most people have some fun friends, especially especially growing up. I, I remember playing foot, you know, football or whatever. Plenty of friends that I had on the football team, I didn't really know that well. You know what I mean? I didn't go to their house ever for most of them, for a lot of them. Um, I couldn't even tell you where they lived. And a lot of them, I didn't really meet their parents. But we did some fun things together by virtue of playing football, eating meals before and after games, and that sort of thing. And then you have fun friends too that maybe you do things on a regular basis. And that's that's okay. But you know, maybe you don't you haven't really talked about life much. Maybe you, you don't really know the person super well, you know, or you're afraid to ask personal questions or they're afraid to ask personal questions. So there's not a level of comfort or acceptance there, which is okay. It, again, it's just kind of a part of life. All this is just sort of a, a part of life. There's not necessarily a right or a wrong way. The next site of friends, moving on to number four. Oh, we're moving right along. Y'all are a beautiful audience. I'll tell you what, y'all y'all don't ask questions. Y'all don't slow me down. Y'all don't make fun of me while I'm, it's great. It's great. Actually, questions would be good. I wish there were. I think I'd do a lot better if there was sort of a an audience to engage with. Um, but the next site, number four, are what I would term filler friends. They're marked by filling some sort of need, usually a social need. So an example would be security, maybe money somehow, maybe they end up buying you things for whatever reason, incidentally, you, maybe food, you just always kind of mooch off their food at lunch, right? Everyone's got, everyone's got somebody that just mooches off, off people. I remember a friend in high school, he would always ask everyone for a dollar and he would brag at the end of the week, man, I made like 60 bucks just asking the whole school for a dollar. <laughs> Some of you are going to turn that into a business idea if you already haven't. So you got to pay taxes on it though. Just kidding. You, you don't really, technically I think you have to, but you don't, you don't have to, you know. So filler friends may provide security, maybe money, maybe food or transportation, you know. And again, sometimes if it's like a mutual thing, like y'all just switch rides, you know, carpooling and stuff like that or switch food or whatever, uh, whatever that looks like. You know, that's just a part of a part of friends. You kind of have each other's back. You know what I mean? It's just an added level of security. So maybe it's like I said, social security. <laughs> not not like the government program, social security. Most of you probably don't even know what that is. And <laughs> when you get older, you still won't know what that is because it's going to be gone. But some sort of social aspect, security, uh, inwardly or externally. You know, they just feel some sort of need. I think a lot. I think this is where the majority of friendship kind of is growing up for a lot of a lot of people because no one wants to be alone you know it's just part of life no one wants to be alone and so everyone has that as their baseline so it's pretty easy to be like all right let's be friends cool you know let's have each other's back to some extent now they probably don't really have each other's back you know if you asked if you were stranded on an island and you needed someone to swim to go get you or whatever uh i don't know how one would even get to that island you know <laughs> be in such trouble you know actually if that was you and you got that call if i got that call or whatever and that was you i'd i'd maybe let you leave a voicemail and let me think about it but so fellow friends you kind of have each other's back but it's still not on a deep level you know you can probably think of a lot of friends who are kind of like that you know they you feel like they kind of have your back but 
do they really do they really really in times of need would they really have your back maybe they would so maybe they're the last level that i would mention here so the last level would be the level of friends that we all want that are all the most difficult to get you know i i probably looking back i probably have less than five friends looking back on my childhood that i would characterize them as being close to the last level of friend now and maybe i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing uh i'd say that's a pretty normal thing though in hindsight you know i talk to a lot of people that are my age that we we don't usually associate that much with people from our childhood it's just how it is people go separate ways but family friend would be what i would call the last level a friend that's like family they aren't literally your family by blood of course and in fact, a, a friend that's like family can be tighter than your actual family, right? Whether that's good or bad, it's just sometimes how it is. But this kind of friend would be, could make, could feel like a brother or a sister, could feel like a second mom or second dad, you know, godfather, or godmother, whatever kind of terms you want to use. And this is where fulfillment and joy begins to set in when you find these type of people. And when you find these type of people, you need to hang on to these type of people because these kind of people are marked by acceptance, appreciation, and sacrifice. And this can take time to develop. But most of the time, we develop the bottom levels of friends. You know, we post on social media, you know, we make a comment, we hit like. I think now you can even hit love. Maybe that's been around. I don't know. But, you know, we think someone posts something which may or may not be incredible. Usually it's not, right? And you think you hit like, and you think, oh, okay, I did, I did my thing. We're, 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 still, we're still in contact. We're still friends. I hit like. Hopefully, they'll hit like back. If they don't, that jerk, how could they not hit like back, right? I, after all these likes that I put out, I mean, I put, I, I put like 100 likes out to, all, to these thousands of friends I have, and I, get, I only get like 20 back. That must mean that they don't like me. Or whatever, whatever that scenario looks for you. You know, we spend a lot of our time with friends on the lower level, developing the lower, and and that has its time. You know, you don't you want you don't start necessarily as a brotherly type friend or a sisterly type friend. It can take time, but it's marked. Hear it, hear it. It's important. Hear that it's marked by acceptance. That's huge. That's huge. Knowing knowing the person, you don't even have to know every in and out about the person, but know that whatever you don't know, it's okay that you don't know. You still accept them for who they are because they're already an adopted brother or sister. You know, you've already decided for through whatever means. You know, it's marked by acceptance. That's huge. That's huge. That is a need, especially growing up, that everybody needs. That everybody needs and unfortunately whenever people around you don't give it to you usually seek it out in other ways and everyone's different and you can literally change somebody's story maybe they're at the acquaintance level with you you know whatever you can literally change somebody's life in school if you begin to provide acceptance to them that it's okay if maybe they're not the most athletic at school or even the most popular or the richest or whatever, or maybe they did something embarrassing. Imagine that. <laughs> How could somebody do something embarrassing in school? How dare they? You know, you can be that person. That could be you. You can make a huge impact with, it could just be a few simple words. It could be a simple action. Usually it's Usually it's not a big profound action that necessarily changes lives. Now, big profound actions can change lives, but in the grand scheme of things, a few small actions just sparking something, maybe it's sparking something in another student's life, maybe it's sparking something in the culture of your school that just sets ablaze. I mean, I'm telling you, sometimes all it takes is just one. To just start something and then it just adds, just multiplies, just exponentiates. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> exponentiates. Some of you, some of you guys who are taking algebra, 
Cal- algebra, calculus, I don't know. Y'all can probably confirm. Ex- it's a word now, exponentiate. I'm telling you, it'll grow. It'll grow. And it can be it can be you. You can leave that mark. You can leave that mark in your school, and you will begin to feel fulfilled in it. Because this is this is a reality. This, this is where I start to kind of try to close up. This this is kind of a reality that I believe here. And there, there's a lot of different ways I could phrase this. But it's not the people who have the most friends that end up the happiest in life. It's usually the people who are the best friends that end up happiest in life. And so let me say that again, because I think it's pretty important. It's not the people who have the most friends that end up the happiest in life. It's usually the people who are the best friends that are the happiest in life. You can't control if people are going to accept you or even be kind to you or want to be your family type friend, right? Not everyone's going to want to have a tight as a brother relationship with you or tight as a sister. Not That's just a part of reality. But you can control how many people you try to be there for them. You try to be their family friend, their brother, their sister, instead of just someone they go to school with. And it doesn't have to happen overnight. It probably won't. And it doesn't have to happen with one big action or one big speech or whatever, you know, like one big conversation. It can just be little things, you know, and it's this, I don't have time to get into practicality of it, but I can tell you learning and using their name is the first and biggest step. Everyone wants to hear their name. Everyone wants to be known. How can you know somebody, truly know them, if you don't even know their name? And that is that is the biggest step. Now, if you're like me, I'm not that great at remembering names. Now, it's not like an intentional thing. If I, if I had the power to remember everything, then I would, right? Some of you can relate. You're like, amen, Kyle. I can't remember squat. I can barely remember multiplication, much less names and then you got last names. Why can't we all just have like one name or something instead of three names? You know, but that's one big step. Just learning names. And, you know, you can figure out the next steps. I mean, this isn't a tutorial on how to practically, you know, make friends. It's more of it's more of a conversation on how do you approach thinking about friendship, you know? It's just, it's not a popularity contest, right? Uh it not to say being popular is bad. Let me let me make that very clear. If you if you are maybe some of you are Mr. and Miss Popular, which is awesome. What are you going to do with that, right? You know, some people that you don't even know their name yet are looking up to you. What if you learned every week? Just pick one person. Look in the yearbook or whatever. Pick one person. Learn their name. Use their name. You can make a profound impact on that person. I mean, it's incredible. How some some people, especially some people might go their whole day and no one even says their name to them except for a teacher. And it's probably something like, like, Jack, wake up, <laughs> right? You know, sleeping in class. Students never do that, right? Especially seniors with that disease that they get, right? Senioritis. So you, you can you can make that difference, right? And if, if you're someone who you or just waiting on someone to make that difference for you, let me just tell you, don't wait for a miracle, be the miracle. That big idea there, big idea, I'm telling you, goes back. It's not the people who have the most friends is being the best friend. That's it. It's not about being popular. It's about trying to make others popular. That's the ticket. If you can make others popular, even try to make others more popular than you. You know, whatever that looks like, whether you consider yourself a a popular person at school or not, make it your goal to make other people popular, add value to others. And that's a huge, that's a huge idea. Valuing other people. That's where it starts. You, you value the person, you know, that doesn't mean that you think that you are not valuable when you value others. doesn't mean that you think you're not valuable. It just means you're subscribing value to others. That's appreciation that I mentioned that I mentioned. Acceptance, appreciation, and sacrifice. Appreciation is subscribing value. That's pretty much all it is. And I know it can be difficult 
because everyone's got challenges in school, right? You get this mixed bag, this mixed bag of thousands of students with different backgrounds and people are just different and we're all afraid of what's different, right? We all, we all have this idea of a perfect friend who's just like us and wants to do everything we wanna do at the exact time that we wanna do it and who thinks the same way we do and says the same words that we do and they're just a, a mirror image of us. Well, that, that person may exist, um, more than likely, uh, if that's the only type of friend you're going to want, you're not going to have any friends, <laughs> right? Or you're not going to be a very good friend if that's all you're looking for. You know, if you're just looking to fill your own security need, you're probably not going to get it filled. But if you look to fill other people's security need, just see what happens. That's all I can say. Cause I can't guarantee anything. I can just say, see what happens. I'm telling you, it, it can be incredible. It can be incredible. So as my conclusion here, as I try to wrap up, and, oh yeah, I got a quote. I was trying to think, did I make a quote? So my conclusion of the whole matter, how do you make friends? How do you make friends? Can you answer that without me telling you? How do you make friends? Here's your answer. Be a good friend, right? Be a good friend, that's it. So that's about all I got. My quote, my fancy dancy quote, it's out of Proverbs. It's out of the Bible. I didn't get into a whole lot of Bible stuff this uh, podcast. Not that that's the complete purpose of this podcast, but everything is sort of biblically, try to be biblically backed to some degree. This is Proverbs 17, 17. You can read it. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. It's good stuff. So thank you guys for joining Hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe on all the networks that I mentioned, Twitter, Facebook. Can you subscribe on Facebook? Whatever. Do, do whatever you got to do on Facebook. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, I think I already said that, Google Play. Subscribe. Please support the show so that I can continue to grow the show. And I'm excited. I'm excited about it. So please be encouraged. Appreciate you guys and look forward to more content. Thanks. If you like this video, please support by subscribing on iTunes, leaving a review, and sharing with your friends.